Japanese Army life. I should say something about Fukushima and also Chernobyl, but certainly now Fukushima and infertility. The, the, the truth is that infertility has been in, uh, increasing in the world for the last 30 or 40 years, probably because of all the radionuclides that, that people are exposed to, originally from the weapons fallout, uh, the global atmospheric testing, and then from Chernobyl, and now from Fukushima. And there are things that people there can do to, to try and minimize, minimize this. Uh, but the main thing is to get away from the radiation, but, and because they, what they have to realize is that this this is an invisible, uh, it's an invisible attack on, on the human race. It's something that will, will appear over the next 20, 30, 40 years, and, and its cause will not really be investigated. So we also predict, I also predict, on, uh, as a result of this ECRR model, that there will be significant increases in infertility in Japan as a result of this accident, and this is quite terrible. And in, any, in many ways, it's more terrible than the cancer in adults because it's, it, it's destroying children who, who could have been born but now will not be born. And some of those who are going to be born from our studies in the Middle East will have horrifying deformities and, and will obviously in an advanced uh, country like Japan will be aborted uh, uh, you know, um, uh, clinically, clinically aborted before they get born. So the, the birth rate will fall. Uh, what did the data show until now, before Fukushima? Oh yes, the the data has been showing that um, that the birth rate, uh, that the that the the, the the sperm count in men has has been falling drastically. Uh, there was a very important study done in Jerusalem a few years ago, which showed that Israeli men had had very low sperm count, and that over the previous ten years it had fallen by a significant amount. And the, and the authors of that study said that if it continued to fall at the same rate. By the year 2020, that they would be totally infertile, and the Israelis would, would have no more children. It's as bad as that. It's as bad as that. And we are so we're, we're now, as a result of Fukushima, introducing a huge load more of this stuff into the atmosphere. But I have to say that it will mostly affect the Japanese, as far as I can tell. It will mostly be a Japanese affair, but that doesn't make it any better. And where does the radiation come in Israel? Come from in Israel? In Israel, it comes from the uh, use of, of uranium weapons. The massive, massive, massive use of uranium weapons by the uh, by the various military um, invaders, I suppose you would call them, the U.S. the, 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 the Allies, they call them, uh, used hundreds and maybe thousands of tons of uranium weapons. Um, there's a new weapon now which uses uranium, and we've made measurements in the hair of the mothers in Fallujah uh, and mothers of children with congenital anomalies. Uh, and the study hasn't been published yet, but what we have found is significant man-made uranium in the hair of these mothers, which is pro almost certainly the cause of congenital anomalies. And where you have congenital anomalies, of course, you also have infertility. It's just that with, with in Fallujah, they, they don't have sufficient uh, medical methodology to, 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 to pick up these, these uh, deformities before they're born. They don't have all the ultrasound stuff and so on, but in the West, they probably find these things and abort them early. So that's why we have these big increases. But the increases are associated with an environment of exposure to uranium. That's the problem. And, and you have to remember that Fukushima contains probably 2,000 tons of uranium. 2,000 tons. Chernobyl had 200 tons, and 50 tons of it exploded. So, so all the things that Alexei Yablokov is talking about is a consequence of uh, 50 tons of uranium in Europe with a bit of the fission products, of course. But in Fukushima, there's more than that. There's, in, principle, in principle, if the whole lot goes up, it, it's, it's a massive amount of uranium. And are there some uh, long-term consequences after 20, after 30 years, 40 years? Uh, it doesn't go away. What, 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 what Alexei says, says is true. It doesn't go away. Um, what Rosa Goncharova showed here in her talk, when she was studying the bank voles, the little animals that live in the Chernobyl zone, was that, that once you irradiate these, these, these creatures, and also human beings, Dubrova has shown this, you, you initiate a, pro a process called genomic instability. And then this is, this is like sort of throwing a switch. And what it does is it increases the genetic mutation rate, uh, quite apart from any mutation that the uranium causes or, or the radiation causes. That's a separate thing. This is like an automatic switch that is thrown at quite low doses. And then you pass this switch on to your children, and they pass it on to their children, and so on. And then with the bank rolls, uh, I know that they've studied the bank rolls and found that 22 generations have still got this switch. Now, I've studied the nuclear test specials. 
Uh, these, are, these are the men who worked for the British Army uh, at the nuclear tests in the Pacific in the, in the 60s. And uh, I studied their children and their grandchildren. And what we found was that the children of these test veterans, this is the British, British Nuclear Test Veteran Association, have about a, ten, a nine-fold excess of congenital malformations. But the extraordinary thing is that the grandchildren also have an eight-fold excess of congenital malformations. So the normal genetic idea that you, you pick off the weak and then it goes down and then you get the strong, and eventually, you know, this is the old nuclear idea of the nuclear war, all the, we, we just have radiation-resistant people who survive. It's just not true. What happens is that it throws a big switch and everybody is affected. And it's, you're affected for generations and generations. So it's, it doesn't even matter if the uranium goes away. It doesn't matter if these radionuclides all decay because you've imprinted something on the human genome which is there forever. That's the danger. Thanks a lot, Thank you. Thank you.